I hope you're ready for some crafty fun because that's what I've got for you today. And this day is special. It is October 3rd, 2024. And this is the first card of Christmas. You know, in the Polar Express, when he goes, the first gift of Christmas. This is the first card of Christmas. I have not done any Christmas cards yet this year, but you are about to see my very first one of many, I hope, because I love to send Christmas cards. I'm Brandy from brandystamps.com, and this is an episode of The Great American Stampin' Show, which is a huge, important competition happening on the YouTube where you have to watch my video and my three competitors' videos. Their links are in my description, and then you have to ponder and think and choose your very favorite one and click like on that one, although we'll never know if you click like on more than one, but you know, do you do you. And I hope you'll like mine. And I am going to feature the 11th layout from the Stampin' Up! catalog. If you have a copy of that, it's on page 22. There are 22 awesome layouts, and this one is number 11, which means we're halfway through, which is very exciting. And I want to make sure you know to get on my email list too. So while I've got you here, just click in my description. There's a link to get on my email list. I am sending out the 12 weeks of Christmas card tutorials. They are coming every week between now and mid-December. That is coming to you straight from the Great American Stampin' Girls. So if you get on any of the mailing lists, you will receive those tutorials. All right, no more chatter, let's stamp now. Here we are, this is page 22, 23 of the current Stampin' Up! catalog. This is layout number 11. It's the one we'll be doing today. I always have to see it a little bigger and get an idea for it. So here's my little printout, and I actually have stuck it right down so that we can make sure the whole time during this video that I'm properly uh, keeping an eye on our layout and creating something that will pay homage to what a lovely layout idea this is. I am starting today with a basic white thick cardstock base. This was four and a quarter by 11 and I did score it at the top but I would like to use my bone folder to give it the perfect crease. We are off to a wonderful start. Isn't this a great card? We're going to make it even better. Here's our next layer. It's also white. Oh wow. Boring, 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 Brandy. I made this later five by three and a quarter. So it's just like half an inch less each direction than the card base. So let's go ahead and do most of our decorating right onto this layer. So the layout looks like it has a couple pieces, top and bottom corners. So here and here. I did some maths. I started by splitting this in half and it brought me to an eighth measurement. It was one and seven eighths on each side. So we're gonna deal with eighths today, people. It's gonna be okay, I promise. I thought I'll use some designer paper. So I looked in my reindeer play, is that what it's called? Yeah, no, reindeer days, reindeer days, it rhymes, but okay, these are the days of the reindeer. Uh, did anyone else watch Days of Our Lives when you were a teenager? That's what I used to watch. These, this is the days of the reindeer though. And I've got a little strip of the paper. I started with this holly, isn't that cute? Just a tight little holly layer. So I thought, okay, that'll be cute for up in my upper corner. I'm gonna do a one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths inch square to go up in the corner there. But then when I looked at the back, dun, da, 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 look at these cute reindeer. They are just like ready to be the other corner. So this one I did fussy cut. Like I carefully placed the reindeer right in the middle and made a one and seven eighths inch square out of it. So here are my two little squares that are already ready to go and be attached to our card. So let's do a little seal plus. This guy's gonna go down here. And I'm actually going to completely hide this basic white layer. So I went all the way to the corner there. There. Okay, so there's the start. Now I need some pieces to go here and here. So I cut some coordinating cardstock and I was like, okay, yes, this works. But I also had an item out on my stamping table that I wanted to use because I haven't used this yet. Here is what it looks like. This is a Stampin' Up! embossing folder 
look how ginormous this thing is. It's like, this is a big folder. Our new folders are quite a bit bigger than they used to be. It's called Forever Plaid. Thank you very much. I've been wearing plaid my whole life. I'll never stop. I love plaid. Forever Plaid is perfect for me. So the plaid goes up and down, which is great, but I am going to lay these in here diagonally. Is that allowed? I hope that's allowed. If not, the Stampin' Police will be here soon. I'm just gonna run this through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, better known as the Big Boss, right now. Are you guys ready for amazingness? I mean, are you ready for really, really per perfection in plaid? Oh my, the way some lines go up and some lines go down, and it's definitely not perfect. Some lines are closer together and some are farther apart. This is the most beautiful plaid I've ever seen, and I'm not even kidding. Stampin' Up, please don't ever retire this folder. I need this in my life, actually, for the rest of my stamping days, so... Now that they got my message, I'm sure that's what'll happen, and I'll just put some mini glue dots on my cardstock corners. I like to use mini glue dots when it's embossed because it's, you know, it's bumpy, and we need something that's going to hold it down and be a sure stick. Okay. There we go. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit of buckling. See the poofing right there? That is okay. That is normal. That happens. Normally, my mantra is basically a mini glue dot can fix anything. So this time I'm gonna get it on the tip of my paper snips. I want it to stay pretty much flat because I don't wanna give any lift to this little pucker that's already puckering. So we'll get into the pucker. Leave the glue dot flat, get it under there. It's like it never happened, people. Never happened. Okay, other layer. Okay, oh, I think this layer is looking so darling. I love it. And everything I do from here on out is just gonna make it better and better. So I hope that's exciting to you. I'm going to add a greeting and I'm going to use this little label. This is from a die set that I recently got. It is called Unbounded Love. This is in a bundle in our current catalog. I did not get the stamps. I don't usually do that, but I only got the dies and it's got all these awesome pieces. I've been using them left and right, people. Awesome frames, scallop pieces, um, fun little sizes that work well for everything. And this is yet another one of them. So recommended purchase, Unbounded Love dies. And I'm going to stamp on it using a new Christmas greeting set called Christmas Labels. I've chosen Be Merry, which I think is very fun and generic. Just be merry because it's the holiday season, people. So here's my Versamark, my Be Merry stamp. I've already got my die ready to go. Let's make sure we get this lovely straight. And then I like to use a tray for all my embossing needs. You can get one of those with the embossing essentials kit. Or is it embossing additions? I think it might be additions, but I'm gonna officially give it a second name, which is embossing essentials. These things are essential for your embossing. Okay, very nice. We're ready to melt this. I'm going to go off screen and get it all melted. Okay, I love how this red just pulls in the slightest bit of red that's already in my background. And I wanted to give this another little something something before I attached it to the front of the card. So I've chosen for my something something this cute ribbon. Ooh, I love shaded spruce, one of my top favorite colors. I've got some right there. And this ribbon is newish, so I figured it needed a chance to be featured on the Great American Stampin' Show. So I've got 13 inches right here, and my goal is to make a faux bow. Not a real bow, a faux bow. So we do a Z. So I'm starting by going, whoop, this is the top. Now I'm going to fold. And you know, a Z goes like this, right? And then we're going back again this way. Ish, like this, okay? 
Now we'll scrunch it all together in the middle and see how it almost looks like a bow, especially if I pulled that tail down. I've got two loops and two ends. I'm going to let this end stay up here if it wants to. And I don't always do this. This is like bonus content, but it worked really well for this particular card. So I'm just cutting off a little snippet, which is of course an official measurement of linen thread. And I'm just going to tie it around the center here. I am only doing that to keep it under control and you know, tight in the center the way I want it, tying it twice here. And this is going to be completely hidden, but it'll help it stay flat because one of my goals for this card is to make it mailable. I wanna be able to send this through the mail and send you know, one of my aunties a little Christmas card or something like that. So, okay, here's my faux bow. Do you see how it looks kind of bowish? So I'm going to start with, you guessed it, a mini glue dot, just a single one about in the center of this little greeting piece. This is just going to hold it in place like this. Now I will trim my little linen thread thingies because I don't want those sticking out from underneath and showing that's not part of our aesthetic today. We attach this to the card and I'm going to do it by putting them on the red layer, very close to the ribbon, but not on the ribbon, above and below. And that way we're not allowing the ribbon to create any more bulk than the height of these mini dimensionals, if that makes sense. So, okay, so we got four mini dimensionals, one on each corner-ish here. I'm going to peel those so I cover up that seam. We'll put it right here. And so those dimensionals kind of pull it quite flat here and really flatten out the way the ribbon is sitting. Let's even this up just a little. And since I've got these out, I will just use these to attach the main layer to the main card too. So the thing with mini dimensionals, obviously you can use them anytime you're attaching something that's itty bitty but they also, they have just slightly less height than the regular dimensionals. And so we are just kind of keeping the bulk of this card down. So this is going to glue in the center. So I'm just looking at all four corners, making sure I've got it approximately centered. And there we go. And I just need one more finishing touch. Here's something else that I had out on my desk. These are in our current mini catalog for the holiday, and they're called White Loose Snowflakes. They're pictured on a page with some snow globe stuff, so these would make a really cool shaker card. When I touch these, they have almost kind of like a rubbery feel. If you remember the little daisies that we had in a past recent catalog, they have a similar texture to the daisies. I'm just gonna see what if it just kind of snows on our card a bit. Okay, I basically kind of just sprinkled some on. I didn't want to let too many go. It looks like I've got about seven here and three here, so maybe a total of 10. I'm just I gonna kind of go around and let these attach to my card. I'm just going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to go around. I'll start at the top of my card. I'll lift a snowflake and put the tiniest drop right where the snowflake was and lay it back down. This stuff doesn't dry right away, so I'm not going to like scrape my hand across it or anything crazy. I'm gonna let them sit and dry. Okay, is it all right if I'm dying a little bit right now? This card turned out so adorable. I love it. This layout is practically perfect in every way. I bet it would be so fun to make any number of cards using this layout, and I bet my competitors made something cute too. But I hope you love mine, and here it is. Well, we came, we stamped, and now it's time to go home again. Actually, my home's right outside this door, and you guys are probably at your home, but you know what I mean. Here is my card from today. I hope you love it as much as I do. If you love it, click like and enjoy watching all the great American Stampin' Show videos. My, my competitors are lovely, amazing, smart stampers, and I support you voting for any one of them. Last week, Shannon was our winner, and she has said she doesn't like to win twice in a row, so keep that in mind when you're voting. 
and I will catch you back here next week. You make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I will be back with a video. I'll see you then.